I'm Alden Sipperstein uh, with the Ohio State University Entomology Department. Today I'm here to talk to you about how to identify bedbugs and inspect for them. So we are first going to be looking at the uh, bedbugs themselves and their behavior. Then we're going to see what we need to bring for an inspection and as well as uh, what to be looking for during an inspection. As you can see, bed bugs tend to group together and can come in many different sizes. However, they tend to remain in tight cracks and crevices and stay very close to one another when remaining still. However, when you disrupt them, they will move around quite a lot more. Um, this is useful to know for when you're looking in between the seams of furniture um, just to find them better. As you can see here, a lot of them will remain on the underside in darker areas of things and will remain very tightly packed together regardless of where they're resting. Often the bed bugs themselves will be rather difficult to find, so th instead there are three other things you can look for. Those being fecal spots are the poop that bed bugs release after drinking blood. They can come in a wide range of colors um, and different amounts. This would be from a lighter infestation, and this is from a rather heavy one. For shed skins, they will often uh, be released onto the ground around where, near the furniture of where bed bugs were found at. So if you see them, it's often a good indicator that bed bugs are around that area. The eggshells are these little white ovals that give a rough texture to these surfaces. They let you know that bed bugs are breeding and releasing more young into that area. Before inspecting, it's really useful to collect these items. A flashlight is great to shine in between cracks and crevices. A card, a flathead screwdriver, and a knife are useful for going in between cracks and crevices to disrupt the bed bugs. And to collect them, a pair of just household tweezers and a Ziploc bag or a pill bottle are great for collecting them. And when you do so, it's useful to mark their location and date that you find them. Uh, once you've found bed bugs, say, on fabric like clothes, stuffed animals, or um, curtains, it's great to, uh, if you want to keep them, put them inside of either zippered bags or a garbage bag that you tie off at the end. Um, what you can then do is place them within a dryer on high heat for 30 minutes to kill the nymphs and adults of the bed bugs present within them. So there are many items to look through, like uh, your mattress, your box spring, uh, your recliner, or your couch. Today we're going to show you how to look through a just standard office chair. Uh, when I see this chair, I see many cracks and crevices where I'd expect bed bugs to be hiding. So for this seam along the top here, what I would do is I'd grab a card and I'd run it around the edge to see if I disrupt any bed bugs. Make sure to be looking to see if anything's crawling out from underneath. Uh, then you'll see on this back, this little uh, nook area, you're going to want to try to disrupt it again, um, like all the areas, but it's also useful to shine a light after doing so to see what comes scurrying out, if anything at all. Um, then you're going to want to see in this nook and crack and disrupt it as well. And then it's really useful often to turn the chair over, as you're going to see. So on the underside here, you're going to see a lot of different areas. Uh, there's this uh, black piece of paper where you're going to want to consider either tearing it off or looking underneath. There are these dowels where it's very useful to shine a light and then disrupt with something smaller, like the pair of tweezers. And then inside of here, you'll notice this pocket, and this is a perfect hiding spot. And along the paper, you can expect to pull it off to find bed bugs within the pouch itself. Uh, the other components of the chair further down would also be good hiding spots. So you have this area where there are nice little tight area, uh, cracks where you can, once again, shine a light. And you're really going to want to move items that you can move around around to see if it disrupts anything, such as like the wheels as well. And then this little covering, you're going to want to, once again, grab um, a knife or your card and a flashlight to just kind of look around to see if you find anything. So in conclusion, uh, we first looked at bed bugs and their behaviors. So they tend to like it to cluster together and hide in cracks and crevices. We then looked at uh, brass paper, uh, some shed skins, and some eggshells. These are all things to look for when searching for bed bugs. 
And finally, we looked at all the items that are useful when uh, collecting bed bugs, so uh, or inspecting for bed bugs. So we have the flashlight to search in between cracks, uh, different flat items to run in between to try to disrupt them, uh, tweezers and a pill bottle and bag to collect uh, what you find, and some larger uh, sealable bags to transfer cl uh, fabrics to then have them dried. We hope this information has been helpful. If you have any further questions, please contact our department.